I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> like I've seen like other YouTubers do this, and every time, I, every time some YouTuber would do that, I'm like, one day. One day. So a while ago, a while ago, a friend of mine kind of sent me a poster about this uh, B-roll making competition. So I was like. Like, nice. At that time, we were working on Still Remain. We were like a week away from the release. So we were like completely involved with that. So I said to myself that I'll do this. I want to do this, but I'll do this later. Like once the film is released. By the way, if you haven't seen uh, Still Remains, I'll leave a link somewhere in the description or like somewhere here, I, somewhere, somewhere on the screen. Okay, so you can like go and check it out. Once the film was out, I kind of got lazy and kind of like kept stalling the whole thing i just had seen the deadline on the poster so i was like you know kind of sure that i'll make something and send it uh, before the deadline on the last day of the deadline last day of the deadline is that the right sentence on the day of the deadline how do you say that anyway so i started like thinking what can i make and the only thing that was going in my mind at the time was let's let's make something about coffee what can we do with a cup of coffee and you know the stuff which is inside of it like coffee powder and sugar and water so i started making stuff up and like i started shooting things and then eventually i had some footage not the perfect footage not exactly what i was looking for but again that was my fault i wasted all the other time i just i was shooting on the very last day so again not much time in hand and that's the thing we're going to talk about today what is b-roll how do you use it in your videos and films in your project if you are unaware of it or in case you know about it but you're kind of confused like i'm assuming if you're watching this video you're either someone i know or you're someone who wants to know about b-roll like genuinely or both in any case thank you for being here back in the days when i was confused about this whole thing the way i understood it was to think of it as the extra footage you get when you're out shooting for a particular project it's basically the extra footage which you didn't plan to get but you got it anyway. So when you're editing that project, whatever it is, it's a short film, it's a travel vlog, it's a normal, this commentary type video, all of that extra footage is B-roll. Now, depending upon the type of projects you're working on, the type of B-roll you're going to get also changes. For example, if you're working on a blog, on a travel blog or something, the type of B-roll you're going to get is going to be very fast. It's going to be very spontaneous. It's going to be something very, you know, random now let's say you're working on a short film the type of b-roll you're going to get is going to be very subtle another very smart way to use b-roll is to understand exposition exposition is basically describing a particular idea or a theme or a theory or anything basically describing anything in words this is exposition me describing what is b-roll to you right this is exposition when i'm editing these kind of videos what i do when i'm editing them basically i just cut throughout the footage i try to remove all the uh, you know pauses or the extra long pauses or the mistakes or I try to edit it the way I want to after that what I do is that I watch it again and again and I try to find places where I can insert the extra clips which would help me to tell the thing I'm trying to tell it kind of gives you this flexibility which you wouldn't have if you don't have that extra footage when a big budget film is you know being filmed usually there's a separate team just for getting b-rolls obviously the style of filming is very similar to the director who is directing the film so that the b-roll wouldn't like look like a misfit out of the other shots but all what it does is that it gives the editor of the film a lot of options to use if they want to. But there are a lot of ways you can use B-roll when you're working on a project. You can use it to establish where you are, the location, the time, whatever. You can use it to correct a mistake or there's a continuity error, something like that. You can hide that using the B-roll you have. You can use it to cut away from something. This technique is used a lot by news people. They keep cutting away from you know, their anchors or the reporters 
to the actual you know live footage or let's say the clips they have gathered about that specific thing what this does is that it keeps the viewer engaged and interested in what's going on it can also help you to establish the mood or the vibe or the tone of uh, the project or the scene let's say a scene takes place on a very uh, quiet night or something you can have a shot of an empty road or something you can have a shot of uh, people sleeping or something so it establishes that okay everything is going to be very quiet the best way to understand the type of b-roll you need to get for your project is to understand what type of project you're working on if you're let's say working on a commercial you're trying to sell something it's generally better to go with the type of b-roll people want to see or let's say the platform you're going to put it on if it's youtube or instagram it's better to go again with that buttery smooth stabilized beautiful looking b-roll there is no specific way to get b-roll it's not like if you're trying to get b-roll it has to be shot at high frame rate or at wide aperture and it has to look beautiful it needs to match with the project with the other footage you have. If you're trying to work on your own project, go with your own ideas. If you want to take B-roll in a specific way, you take B-roll in a specific way. Don't think that the beautiful looking B-roll is the only B-roll. It can be unstable, it can be shot at very narrow aperture, it can be not very beautiful looking. The only thing is it needs to match with the project you're working on. Shoot a ton of B-roll. Try to capture a lot of different versions of it so that when you're actually editing, you can actually see which one works and which one doesn't and why. Now when I was researching for this video I came across this video by this guy called Christian. He made this video about C-roll. This is something which doesn't actually exist. He basically talks about filming for no reason like A-roll is filming completely planned. B-roll is the extra footage. C-roll according to him is something which is neither planned nor important it is just for yourself for th no reason you're just filming it because you like to film i recommend everyone to watch that video i'll leave a link to it somewhere in the description it's a really beautiful video i really liked it so back to the story which i started at the beginning of this video what happened to the competition thing so i shot a bunch of footage edited it and by around 10 50 pm or something i uploaded it on drive and then i went to their instagram page to find the submission link which i couldn't find so i scrolled down to find that poster i was sent by someone and i found it so i opened it and that's when i saw that the deadline was not what i was thinking it was the same day but it wasn't 11 pm but 11 am so like i missed the deadline by like 12 hours so anyway i decided to <laughs> So I decided to text them, I'm like, can you please consider this submission? And they were kind enough to say, yes, send it over, we'll, we'll, we'll accept it. So once I was done sending them the link, I went back to the post, just out of curiosity to see what else is written there. And what I saw is that the duration limit was one minute. The video I made was two minutes, more than two minutes. And it wasn't mentioned on the poster. Moral of the story is, if you're someone who is participating in a competition, read all the guidelines, you know, properly, at least once. All the rules, all the criteria, all the guidelines, whatever the stuff is, just read it once, at least once, read it as many times as possible. And if there is any confusion, if there is any doubt, ask the people who are organizing it. Please don't be like me. And if you're someone who is organizing something, please try to put as many details as possible in the poster because most of the time no one is going to come to your instagram page to check that post that poster is what is being spread throughout the social media so like that's what people are going to see that's what i saw and i'm not saying that it's their fault it's not their fault it's completely my fault i'm i'm the one who messed it up but i'm also saying that if they had just put that duration limit on the poster that wouldn't have happened. But again, it's my fault. All my fault. Mostly my fault. That was all I had. Please do leave a comment. I would love to read your thoughts about the things I said. And I still really don't have any idea how to end video. So just like last time, take care of yourself. Don't get yourself killed. 
I'll see you next weekend. Bye.